God. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hope everybody had a great day yesterday. We're back today. Well, good morning, Millie. A drive car for Millie. And welcome, Vera. Welcome. And Reverend uh, Lisa, hey, you welcome. Amen, amen. Yeah, for those who uh, came, on, uh, came on late, we'll always remember for those who are newer people, if you come on during that particular song, the reason you get deleted is because what I always say before is no typing during the present song, which is called Hallelujah, worshiping the Lord uh, in 100 percent. And so that's what, why you were, what, what happened to my lines? They're disappearing. They're disappearing because there's no typing when we're in the presence of the Lord. So we can just totally focus 100 percent on the Lord and nothing else, computers, keyboard, nothing, just rest. Sit back, you know, like you, like I always call, it, sit back in your Holy Ghost easy chair and say, ah, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for taking every care of my life. You know how you feel when a hot day and you get home and you hit the easy chair and you lean back your lounge chair, your feet go up. Ah, yes, Lord. That's what you do in your Holy Ghost easy chair. When you go into stillness, every single care should leave you because you've just given it to the Lord a few songs earlier. We laid everything on the altar and now it's just a bask sit back and like i said lesson uh i think it's 348 i think i, I don't know, was it 458 i got i got write that lesson down where i made it nothing but stillness the song we just heard lasts for one hour and 10 minutes of just soaking in stillness and i advise each one of you to at least thank you snurks 458 lesson 458 is just a one hour and 10 minutes of resting in the presence of the lord and, and it's amen Nelia and it's all about just giving and we've got to remember that and, and that's and a lot of times a lot of our lessons uh, are seem like repeat in different I'm saying sometimes a uh, same thing in different ways because it's really about burning into our spirit how to be in this world but not of this world and anytime we feel we're being pulled by distractions distractions and uh, confusion and violence all the things we see in the news every single day that's trying to steal our peace of mind, those are all part of the tricks of the devil to steal our joy. You always hear me say this every day. Nothing more important than our joy for the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our what? Our strength. The joy is our strength that supports our faith. And when your faith gets weak, there goes your hope. So the joy of the Lord is my strength, the strength to hold on, my faith, and to keep praising God and saying, thank you, Jesus. And that strength always gives me hope that i'm going to make it through whatever i'm going through i'm going to be victorious eventually over whatever i'm facing and that's why they're all tied together in that way amen now you can see the day's lesson it says you know, my, my poetic lessons which means i'm using some of my poetry but it just said surviving now surviving meaning what surviving in this world without giving in to any other devil's things really i could have very easily said walking in victory in this world <laughs> So, so surviving, surviving really means we survive the devil's attack and we continue to walk in victory. The devil, you got no kind of hold on me because Jesus Christ gave me what? Total victory. And as long as we remember we have total victory, nothing in this world will pull us away from the Lord. But we've got to remember that. And you remember that by what? Continu continuing to study the word, continuing to remember it, continuing to talk to the Lord every day, pray every day. That's what it's all about, it's surviving. Now, the text for the day comes from uh, Proverbs 2. Actually, there are two texts. The first text, hey, Kazian, welcome back, Kazian. Uh, Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commandments within you, make your ear attentive to wisdom incline your heart to understanding for if you cry for discernment lift your voice for understanding if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures then you will discern the fear of the lord and discover the knowledge of god for the lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding uh, Verse seven, the page of stuff. Uh, verse seven. Uh, he stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice, and he preserves the way of his godly ones. 
then you will discern righteousness and justice and equity in every good course for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul knowledge will be present to your soul and see that's why we have to we have to make sure that we always remember these things as i was just saying earlier we have to remember these things as far as when we're dealing with how to react to all the things around us amen jesus loves me yeah that's right make a folder you make a folder you make a playlist uh you can loop some prayers whatever it is to keep the word of god fed into your spirit is key well, welcome robert so if you notice in verse uh the wisdom is the key and that's what we're doing when we come to come together to, to share the word of god together and, uh, and when you read the, the word of god alone i notice you go back to verse five now it just said make your ear in verse two it says make your ear attentive to wisdom sometimes <laughs> when we're in the mode we're too much in the mode hey candy 91 sometimes we're too much in the mode of trying to do everything ourselves but when we get us out the way whenever we get us out the way we can hear god's wisdom because see that's what i'm saying so many times when we're trying to solve a situation whenever we're trying to solve a situation we get so engrossed in trying to solve it and forget to ask the lord to stand with us in the middle of it we get whenever we get a blind sight the flesh wants to automatically do a knee-jerk reaction a knee-jerk reaction now knee-jerk reaction just means my flesh wants to react but i should well, well don't let the don't let the flesh react no have no fear stand still have no fear stand still that is where it is no, 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 too much conversation going right now let me stay focused up uh, uh, melissa amen so what we do we got to make sure we we when we panic when we focus on the world we panic we stress out anxiety all that stuff goes through our body because we're now doing a knee-jerk reaction from the physical but when we go have no fear stand still first the thing we do the first thing we do is now we got to focus on making sure okay don't look at the world don't look at the world there is no need your reaction go to the spirit go to the stillness i just said before we come to stillness we come to stillness amen Pentia. we come to stillness when we come into stillness we're entering into stillness and not letting a single thing distract us that's what stillness is about don't let what just happened distract you go into god's presence and ask the holy spirit guide me right now holy spirit give me guidance right now i'm going through i'm going through some stuff right now i'm going through some stuff right now help me stay focused help me help me not lose my temper help me help me just stay in the spirit not in the flesh because right now i want to i want to cuss somebody out right now i want to knock somebody out see that's what the flesh says when you get hurt in the flesh emotionally you want to physically go and knock somebody out that's your flesh talking that's not the spirit talking the flesh wants to get immediate revenge immediate satisfaction somebody hurts me i'm gonna hurt him right back don't even think about it you hurt me i'm gonna hurt you that's the flesh talking the spirit recognizes there's some demonic spirit speaking through the person who's now trying to steal your joy who came up and said something to you that's hurtful uh disrespectful they doing that on purpose that's the spirit in them trying to steal your joy and that's why we when we walk into a, a workplace especially Whenever we walk into a, a workplace and we know we gotta we gotta pull through a situation, and many of you have we prayed for many of you in workplaces that have horrendous conditions as far as just surviving. And many times you always hear me say this: don't ever walk into a workplace where you know there's a hostile environment without praying up in your car before you walk in that place. You gotta walk, you gotta pray because you know what you know what's ahead. You know it's a battle before you walk through those doors. So you, you, you play the, the worship music all the way to work, whatever you need to get excited, Lord. You pray in the, you, whether it's fellowship, pray in the music, prayer, whatever it is. You you have you 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 pray yourself up until you're almost shouting. So when you walk in that <laughs> you walk in that workplace, you prayed up, you almost ready to dance. Thank you, Jesus. Da, 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 thank you, Jesus, whatever it is. So you so on fire for the Lord that when you walk in that workplace into all the heaviness all the backstabbers all the liars all the jealous folks all those who don't like your light remember there are a lot of people at work or around you no matter where you are a lot of people cannot stand your light in the lord because if they don't have it 
if they either want it or they resent you for it. You don't know which one it is. You just, you just let out of mind, I'm going to let it shine. That's why I sing that. That's why the Lord gave me 10 verses. This light of mine, this light of mine, I'm going to let it shine no matter where I go. I don't, I don't care what I'm going through. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. You can in insult me. I'm going to let it shine. You can talk about me. I'm going to let it shine. You can talk behind my back. This little light of mine, you cuss me out. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, all things going wrong. This little light of mine, you got fired today. I'm going to let it shine. See, it doesn't matter. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. It doesn't matter what you do to me. My light is never going out, just like the sun. My light is never going out. And that's what we got to remember. It's all about the devil trying to put our light out by hitting us with something so hard. This little light of mine, I'm going to put it out. That's what he's trying to do. No, this little light of mine, I may be knocked off my feet. I'll be singing this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. I'm laying on my back. I just got knocked off my feet. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. See? We got to keep that visual, keep that visual in your spirit because everything we go through in the entire day, we sometimes think about, man, my, my day was kind of hard today. What, what's, what, what's going on today is not about what's going on each day. It's what's going on in the spiritual warfare that's going on every day. Every single day, spiritual, spiritual warfare is going 24-7. 24 7 amen snurks that's exactly right see when people aren't prayed up any demon can jump into them and talk through them if they're not prayed up that's why the, when, the, when the when the lord asked the devil what what what, what you've been doing i've been roaming the earth roaming the earth what trying to seek who can jump into seek who can who can speak venom through see if you're prayed up he can't talk through you but if your co-workers are not prayed up if your co-workers are not prayed up then that's what that's the thing that's going to throw you off because if they're not prayed up, anything, anything can jump into them. And when anything can jump into them, that's what can that's what can always cause all kinds of adversity in your life. When anything jumps into people around you who are not prayed up, and you don't know who's not prayed up. Unless you know your coworkers that well, you have no idea who is not prayed up. What friends are prayed up, what coworkers, even what family members. Even if, if you have family members who are not saved. And that's why many times, that's why many times we do that. Many times we don't let others come into our presence. Even family members. And some of you may already know that. Some of you may already know that whenever you got family members around you who can steal your joy. And you, and, and sometimes there are even, there are even, um, there are even family reunions that don't even meet because they know when the family comes together, there will not be peace. Now, th that, those are the families I'm praying for a lot of times. When you hear me always say, pray for families under attack, we're, we're pray, we pray for them because we're trying to say, you know what, we're trying to get them to just pray for family members even if they're not in your presence. We pray for them because you know when you physically get together, if you're not on the same spiritual path together, then that you cannot exist together in the same space. You're family, you love each other, but you cannot exist. You cannot exist in the same room. You cannot exist in the same room if a fellow family member is not prayed up at the same level that you are. And that's why we have to always use discernment. Always use discernment and, and make sure that you cannot let yourself be pulled into that environment when you know what you're about to walk into. And that's kind of what we're talking about today. These are all the things we're surviving. We're surviving people in our family, our co-workers, our friends, our circle, anywhere we go, who we're going to run into people. Whenever you know you're going to run into people, be ready for someone who's not prayed up to step into your presence to try to steal your joy. That's why we never leave the house without Psalm 91 protection. And if you have to read Psalm 91, well, I got a, I got a version where I got it recorded on our, our channel. Either read Psalm 91, play Psalm 91, whatever it is, before you walk out that door, while you're getting dressed, play Psalm 91. He who dwells in secret place the most high. Go all the way through it. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Put on the whole armor of God. All these. And of course, don't forget, never forget Luke 10, 19. I give you authority to trample over all, all the power, all the power of the enemy. Never walk out the house without your armor, Psalm 91 protection, 
and your authority. Because if any, anybody talking during my message is deleted, Red Rose. If you're talking during my message, you will be deleted. That's what the answer is, Red Rose. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. So that's what it's all about. When I'm doing a lesson, no one is talking. If you're talking, I delete you. Amen. So that's what it's all about, staying focused on what I'm talking about. Because it's very important when the Holy Spirit brings me to bring these lessons back in different ways. It's to bring back understanding like the like like the like the scripture just said uh when you when you're receiving wisdom then you will discern the fear of the lord and discover the knowledge of god for the lord gives wisdom from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding that verse 6 proverbs 2 6 from the lord's mouth comes what knowledge and understanding so many times how many times have we read the word and and it, you read it, it sounds good, but you really didn't understand it that, at that particular day. And then you go back and I give you a scripture and you go back, wow, that's rich. That's a rich scripture. And then you go back to the scripture and realize you already underlined it years ago. And see, that means that means when, when uh, yeah, I, I deleted your mic because no, 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 no talking during the, the fellowship. Uh, so when I, when, uh, when uh, whenever we come back, and, and you can and, and for understanding and stuff that's why we always make sure we never get distracted like what's happening we got to stay focused on the word and what's going on amen so when you get knowledge and understanding you can read the same scripture you've read for years and all of a sudden it's a light bulb oh that's what that means see we're all at different levels of our walk with the lord and we've always read the word but according to your spiritual maturity is depending on where your understanding is. You can read the scripture and not totally understand it, but the fact that you're seeking, remember, he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him, who diligently seek him. And so whenever you've been diligently seeking the Lord, when you're diligently seeking the Lord every day and you're seeking his face and you're praying and you're talking to him every day, that's seeking his face. Whenever you're seeking the Lord, that means Lord, I need you in this situation. I don't know. And, and see, that's what that's where our obedience is. He is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him, which means no matter what we're going through, we seek his face. Don't go to fear. Seek his face. I've been blindsided. Seek his face. See, that's, that's the importance of why he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. Because when you're diligently seeking him, we're being obedient to saying, I'm trusting the Lord. I'm not panicking. I'm seeking his face. Trust the Lord with all your heart. I'm not panicking. See, uh, in all my ways, I acknowledge you and you will direct my path. See, these are all the ways we are seeking the Lord. Whenever we turn to the Lord for answers, whenever we turn to the Lord for answers, that means we're getting us out the way. Uh, uh, lean out to understand every level, every level, Snurks, every level in all your ways. Your own understanding means you're trying to do something without God. You're, you're acting impulsively. A knee-jerk reaction is not, it, it, where it says, lean not to your own understanding. Sometimes we don't understand why things are happening. And so then we put together our own story. We put together our own pieces of puzzle, not understanding why God did something because we'll never understand why God did something. That's why Isaiah 55 says, my ways are higher than your ways, my thoughts above your thoughts. And then he repeats it. As high as the heavens are above the earth, my thoughts are above your thoughts and my ways above your ways. Which means, in essence, we can never figure out why anything happens in this world. We can, we have a theory, we can try to figure it out, but realistically, no one on this earth can say exactly why God did, did this or why God did that. Because we're such a small piece of the puzzle. The entire puzzle, only God sees the entire puzzle and it's why he does everything he does. We get upset because we can't figure it out. Well, God, why is this happening? God, why is that happening? I don't understand. What's going on in my life? Why, 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 why? We don't know. All we can do is trust the Lord with all our heart. Get the whys out. Lean not to your own understanding. Why, God? Why, God? Relax. Trust me. Relax. Trust me. Don't keep asking why, because the more you ask why, the more frustrated you'll get because you can't figure out the why. Stand still. Stop running around like a chicken with your head cut off. A chicken with a head cut off panics, runs around the bend, 
running around aimlessly in circles, not going anywhere. God, stand still. Lord, what you want me to do? Lord, I'm going through something right now, Lord. Give me peace. Lord, help me, Lord. Guide me, Lord. Talk to me, Lord. Speak to me, Lord. Give me peace. That's what you do when you go into the presence of the Lord. You're asking him for peace and guidance into what you do in this situation. And when you're standing still, you'll hear it. Sometimes you hear his voice in stillness. Sometimes right after you come out of stillness, somebody who doesn't even know what you're going through will, will walk up to you and say, you know what? You really need to think about this. And what they'll say is something that's identical to what you just prayed for. And they have no idea what you prayed for. That's validation. Usually for everything the Holy Spirit gets you, it'll be validated either by somebody else It'll be validated a few a few hours later by something that happened. And it's validation of what the Holy Spirit already told you. And then out of the mouths of two or more witnesses, now out of somebody else's mouth, they're saying what you just heard in the Spirit, and they had no idea what you were praying for in the Spirit. And that's how your validation comes. <laughs> well, maybe I maybe I really may, maybe I should do this. Amen. Amen. So my notes go ahead. So the first poem. The first poem we're doing today, now, th this particular poem came to me, is, this poem is called, It's So Easy to Get Bitter. It's so easy to get bitter. Now, first of all, before I go into the scriptures, and that, let me give the title, the reason this poem was written is because in this world, when you look at the world, remember, we, remember the thing is, we want to keep looking at God, but when you look too much at this world, you can get a bitter spirit, either upset about what's happening to others, what's happening to you, how much longer do I got to go through this, what's going on around me. What, here we go, lean not to your own understanding. Once you get into trying to figure out how come that happened to them, how come they got blessed, I didn't. They're doing nothing but sin and they got blessed. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This one, you said they're getting blessed and they're living in sin. How come they're being blessed? Are they really being blessed? Because if they're living in sin and getting blessed, guess who's blessing them? That's right, from the pit of hell. They're being blessed from the pit of hell by probably selling their soul for the devil. And now they're getting all the money and they want in this world because they just gave up their soul and gave up their salvation for the wealth. So be careful when you say, well, how come they're living in sin and they're getting blessed? Yeah, but did they give up their, their salvation to get it? If, if that's what they did, you know what? Get, stay away from me. No kind of hold on me. I, 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 I no longer ask that question. I no longer get jealous because if I know a person is living in sin and it looks like, it looks like they're getting blessed while they live in sin, we know who the blesser is when a person lives like that and is getting blessings. And we also know their future, their destiny, because we know what they gave up to get that wealth. If they live in sin so that's what i want that's a discernment i want you to make sure you don't get yourself upset because if you don't realize that you'll get upset you get bitter man I'm, I'm, I'm working my i'm going to church every sunday i'm giving my tithes and offerings i don't understand what's happening what's happening you're really going through a season of job you're going through a job season but remember job was being tested job wasn't being punished people read job how come how come god was so mad wait a minute wait a minute forget, forget the beginning of job God was bragging. God was bragging about Job's loyalty and love. And he dared the devil. The devil said, well, yo, yo, consider my servant Job, God tells Job, uh, tells the devil, consider my servant Job. God was so proud of Job's godliness that he even told the devil, you, 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 let, me, let me show you what loyalty really is. I'm paraphrasing right now. Let me show you what, what loyalty really is. Consider my servant Job. You can hit him with everything you want. You just can't kill him. And he'll never curse me. See, that's, that's where we really want to be. Can, can you imagine our seeking the Lord is to a level where God is bragging about us like he did Job? God is bragging about Job, about Job's love and loyalty to the devil. Hey, yeah. Uh, yeah, try it. Yeah, go ahead. Hit Job with everything. He'll never curse me because he knows he we love him. And that's what Job proved throughout the book of Job. No matter what he went through, all the things he went through, he never cursed God. And he was blessed at the end of Job. He was blessed mightily for that. So that's what we got to remember. How's, how's, how's it go? And after he has tested me, 
I shall come forth as gold. And see, whatever test we're going through right now, whether it's test provision, healing, deliverance, whatever test we're going through in our life right now, we make it through that test, we shall come forth as gold. Because when we understand God is in the middle of everything we're going through, even hard times, one of the things this poem is about, when you get bitter, you're thinking God is not in the middle of everything you're going through. You think God gave up on you along with everything else. So we get bitter because we think God gave up. Now let's look at Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, uh, 11, 8. Hebrews 11, 8. Because what we have to remember in these times uh, is when we when we start looking... When we start looking at that, we think about that. Uh, well, we, uh, when you when you when you turn down the uh, when you turn down God for the devil snurks, most people when you go back to backslidden, you just told Jesus, "Well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry you died on the cross, but I'm going back to the world." Well, I don't know you. I died on the cross for you, and you now saying I'm going to choose the devil over all that Jesus did on the cross. That's one of the ways, which means you're intentionally choosing the devil over God. That's one of the main ways Jesus said, I don't know you. Because all that God has done for us, all the ways he saved us, and you choose the devil? Excuse me? I don't know you. <laughs> That's what that answer is, Snurks. Amen. 11.8. Uh, by, uh, by, by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeying by going out to a place which he was to receive an inheritance, he went out not knowing where he was going. He went out not knowing where he's going. And see, the key to bitterness, not being bitter, is like John has said earlier, we want to be in control. The flesh wants to always be in control. We got to know everything. We got to know why God did this. How come God did that? We want to be in total control. Because when we're in total control, we think we know everything, but we don't. When we don't understand everything going on around us, then that makes us understand that we cannot we cannot understand all the confusion around us. And now we're trying to we're trying to stay focused in the word, but we're too busy trying to be in control. When we trust God, we're not in control. We're trusting God for control. That's our control is to trust God. When you don't trust God, you're trying to do everything that is God's job, and we're trying to do it ourselves. That's why I said we're running around, don't know everything because we're trying to do, based on our limited knowledge, we're trying to do what we think we should do. When we trust God, he'll do what he knows needs to be done. See, we don't know everything, but when we try to do everything ourselves without God, we end up more frustrated because God knows how to solve the problem. We're trying. We're trying to solve the problem. God knows how to solve the problem. As long as you keep trying to solve the problem, you're not accepting God's help, and, and you just go more and more in circle, more and more frustration, then you want to give up, you feel like you failed, all the lies of the devil come in because you, you feel like God's not there, it's not God's not there, you're too busy trying to do God's job and getting in God's way by not standing still and letting God do, he's trying to bless you, and you're too busy trying to do everything yourself, trust me, he says, trust me and i told you told me that many times over this past season i'm going through recovery trust me i know you i know you're not working trust me you don't know what, what uh, trust me stop asking questions trust me you do I, do I trust you yes lord okay lord i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry lord uh, you 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 create the universe not me lord excuse me excuse me lord for acting like i know how to do your job that's what we're doing Excuse me, Lord, for getting in your way. Excuse me, Lord, for me thinking I actually know the answers to what you're trying to do. No, his ways are above our ways. Now, also, and you don't have to turn, uh, look at Romans 2.11. Romans 2.11. These two are both for this first form, and, uh, and I'll give that to you. Romans 2, verse 11. Now, the very short verse, very powerful verse. For there is no partiality. There is no partiality with God. There is no partiality with God. See, that's one of the things that makes us bitter. We're thinking, we're thinking, well, how come? How come? 
How come they're getting blessed? How come? See, again, you're thinking God favors somebody else and they skipped over you. How come they're getting blessed, God? How come I'm not being blessed? God is not a favorite person. That's another that's an another wording of this same scripture. God is not a favorite person. God doesn't play favorites. When, and that's why when two teams go to compete, God is not involved in competition. When you when we used to play, I used to play football, we didn't pray for victory. We prayed for everyone to come out of the game safe and unharmed and uninjured. If both people are praying for victory, if, if both teams are praying for victory and somebody's got to win, that means God's favoring somebody. God doesn't even get involved. God is not a favor of persons. He's no, there is no partiality. So what we pray for in competition is pray for a healthy competition and that everybody comes out of the game safe and healthy and no one's hurt. And however it comes out, it comes out. But the blessing is we came out safe and not uninjured. Amen. Now, the, the poem... I love it over there. The poem, Amen, John. Okay. It's so easy to be bitter. That's the name of this poem. It's so easy to be bitter. It's so easy to be bitter about life when life deals you a heavy blow. It knocks out all the wind you've got with nowhere left to go. It's so easy to not want to forgive when someone stabs you in the back. It sends your blood pressure out of control and puts you on the attack. Uh, it's so easy to take your life when your heart's been torn apart. But in the midst of all that pain, you pray for a brand new start. It's so easy to get mad at God cause life isn't going your way. Instead of God's voice, you make another choice and now depression is part of your day. Now, after all this is said and done, give the Lord your every single care. He'll take everything that's troubling you and give you peace because he's always there. It's so easy to be bitter. And as always, I put these poems on the YouTube page. It's the, see, that's why when we're keeping our mind stayed on the Lord. And I, actually, this is, no, this is poem number one, John. I'm sorry. This is poem number one. It's so easy to be bitter. Uh, that, that's why the, the, the importance, the importance of Isaiah 26.3, thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. When you're keeping your mind stayed on the Lord, that is the key for us not to let our flesh take over and run amok and get completely out of control. When we're keeping our mind stayed on the Lord, no matter what we're going through. And you will hear me say this over and over again, because remember, the fellowship is a training ground to get all of us to the same level of walking boldly in our word and our walk with the Lord. Amen. So that was called, it's so easy to be bitter. Uh, the next one. Now, that's, that is keeping, that is keeping the, the, the you in control. You fellas, oh, you're singled out in Snurks. Yeah, that's a lie from the devil, Snurks. Amen. When you feel like you're singled out, that's not them singling out. That's you feeling you're singled out. Now, sometimes when you 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 someone sometimes they are picking you on you at work because they're trying to they don't want to fire you, <laughs> they don't want to fire you, so they'll come in and try to make you do something to get fired. That's a trick of the devil. Sometimes in in some places, they don't want to fire you, so they'll try to push you to a level where you'll lose it, and then they fire you because of your reaction. That's a subtle trick some employers do. Either they don't have the nerve to fire you or they'll get in trouble firing you. So let me say something to you to make you go off. And now I can write down insubordination, in resistant authority, whatever it is. And now you get fired because of your reaction. But when you stay at peace, you make the abuser even more upset. Because the more peace you are, the more they try to steal your joy. And you just sitting there with the joy of the Lord in your face. They get more and more upset, and now they look stupid because it now is obvious they're attacking you, even to the those who are look, looking, at, looking at the situation. When you stay at peace and someone is attacking you and you're staying at peace, when somebody says, what happened? Well, that person was bullying. The boss was really treating them bad. Now, all of a sudden, others who report what happened, your peace lets it openly be known that you were being attacked, and that's sometimes 
works to your advantage by staying at peace. Amen. It makes you mad, but keep the little line of mind. If you start humming, they're, they're going at you. This little line of mind. I'm going to let it shine. This little, <laughs> you might look at him. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. <laughs> look at the abuser in his face. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Go way, way, way my desk. Go way, way, way my desk. And go back to the <laughs> And sometimes that's what it means. Amen, Tanya. Peace beyond understanding is people not understanding how can you be at peace when someone is Ver verbally attacking you as such a in, in disrespectful way how can you hold your peace because the peace of god is in you and people will say well how'd you how'd you do that i got the peace of god then all of a sudden how do i get that now you just save your soul because when they see the effect of the peace of god in action other people want to know i want to do what you just did how can you hold your peace with that kind of behavior i got the spirit of god in me the love of god and now they want to know that. Amen. Amen. Now, because of that, number two, the number two poem is tied to number one. We never want to go astray. We never want to go astray from the Lord. See, if you go astray from the Lord, that's why bitterness comes in. Because now you're going back towards the world. You're looking too much. You're looking too much at the world. When you look too much at the world, you lose your joy. And here comes all the negative stuff. So you never want to go astray is the name of the next poem. Look at James 4, 8. Uh, the job, the pastor, the job saved you, Vanessa. Amen. Amen. For blowing, blowing your top. Praise God. And, and try to remember that day, Vanessa. Uh, look at now. Look at James 4. James 4, 8. James, James 4, 8. Now, when you're about to lose it, no, uh, verse 8 draw near to god and he will draw near to you cleanse your hand you sinners and purify your hearts you double-minded see when we're focused on the lord the most important part of verse 8 draw near to god and he draws near to you so when you go into stillness when someone is attacking you and you go into stillness you're drawing near to god and in that stillness He'll draw near to you and you won't lose your temper. You won't lose your peace. You won't lose it because when you draw draw to the Lord, when you go to the Lord, he comes closer to us and that's what gives us the peace beyond understanding. Draw near the Lord and he will draw near to you. It's like us getting close to Psalm 91. We're, we're, getting, we're running to Psalm 91 protection in the middle of an attack in our day. And because we, it's almost like we're going to Psalm 91 protection and the Lord says, come in my child. And he opens the door, come abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And now we're in our, our peace, our peace beyond understanding, our presence of the Lord, stillness. And now that chaos, that attack cannot touch us because now we're in the presence under the shadow of the Almighty. We're now dwelling and that gives us that peace beyond understanding. That's what I have to remember. Now, okay, this one's called we cannot go astray. Okay, uh, come back here. Okay, we, we 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 want we never want to go astray. Sometimes we feel God's given up on us in every single prayer, but then we come to our senses, praise God, and remember He's always there. Sometimes we get caught up in life and forget all God has done and every time we think like that the devil has us on the run we must never forget who we are that's who we are in Christ for the devil's job is to steal kill destroy and take everyone he can on a heist a heist back into the world of sin with hope with a hope you'll never get out he wants us to burn forever with him is really what it's all about because you see he's lost his way back to God, destroyed his right to return. For yes, he knows his destiny is set and is and that and that is to eternally burn. We must hold on to God's unchanging hand. We never want to go astray. For we know the only way to victory is living for the Lord day after day. We never want to go astray. 
And that's what we, that's what we do by coming to fellowship, by coming to fellowship every day. That's what we're doing. We're 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 we're, we're just holding on, and we're just holding on to God's unchanging hand by coming into His presence every day. That's where we're going. We're going to His presence. Draw near to God; He draws near to us. Whether it's live fellowship, archives, reading the Bible, listening gospel music, going to the Word, however you go to the Word. You're drawing near to God and he draws near to you because he knows we're trying to stay focused in this world, be victorious in this world, surviving the devil's attack. That's why this lesson today is called surviving. What are we surviving? We're surviving the devil's attack by resisting the devil and he will what? Flee, flee from us. Amen. Amen. Now, and the final prayer, our uh, final poem. Now, once we've done all these things we're talking about, once we've done this, we, we once we stop being bitter, and once we stop being bitter, and we and, and we look not at things that are seen, but things are not unseen. We walk by faith, not by sight. Once we do these things, once we do these things, now poem number three. I can feel you working on me. I can feel you working on me. Now this is a, a prayer to the Lord. Many times, once we're now walking in God's will and His way. He starts moving in us. We start looking at things differently. Sometimes he tells us, all right, I want you to preach the word. I want you to teach the word. Sometimes we don't know what God is doing, but we can feel God changing us. We're no longer quick tempered. Now we're patient. No longer are we impatient. We're now patient. We can feel God changing us as we're changing because when we keep seeking the Lord's face, he starts making us more and more like he needs us to be, not who we were in the world and you can feel that a lot of times you can actually feel god working on you and you don't even know where he's taking you but you can feel i don't look at things like i used to i, I I'm, I'm changing somehow why because you can feel the changing taking place inside of you amen now this uh this part of this this one we know about psalms 51 10 <laughs> psalms 51 10 is one we say all the time Psalm 51 10. 51 10. We say this all the time. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. That's what's happening. When you feel God working on you, when you can feel God working on you, that means what? He's creating a clean heart. And he's removing, he's renewing your spirit to be a steadfast spirit within you. So when we say, create in me, Lord, a clean heart, and you always hear me say, and, re and, re and, and remove anything in me, Lord, that's not like you. I always add that to a prayer. I do a prayer version of this. Lord, create in me a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything that is not like you. And that really is the meaning of, and renew a steadfast spirit in me which means a spirit that wants to live for the Lord, a spirit that does not want to be in this world. Amen. So we want to make sure, we want to make sure that we keep all these things focused on everything we're talking about because that's what the whole key is. That's what the whole key is, making sure we stay focused in everything we're talking about. Now look at the, the, uh, the uh, that was verse uh, 5110. The poem is, I can feel you working on me. Lord, Lord, I can feel you wor uh, working inside. Lord, I can feel you working inside. I'm changing every day within. No longer ruled by worldly desires. Every day is turning away from sin. I no longer listen to words of hate that try to bring me down. No longer listening to those who so close to me, seeking to make me frown. For now I know who I am in Christ and the spirit who lives in me. The Holy Spirit guides my way to where God wants me to be. No longer can the world judge my ways and make me doubt my worth. I am here to please my Lord and Savior and not man who lives on this earth. I'm rededicating my commitment to the Lord to stay right on God's path, to never let the devil pull me away and put me back on the path to God's wrath. So devil, you have no hold on me, nothing you can make me do, nothing you ever can throw my way that God won't pull me through. 
Thank you, Lord. I can feel you working on me. You see, once we're walking, once we're walking in God's will and God's way, he's protecting us. See, when we're doing the best we can, we can only do the best we can. We're living in the flesh. We will never be perfect in this flesh. But when we feel God is working on us, that's our reward for he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. When you're diligently seeking the Lord, part of the reward is giving you protection. Part of the reward is giving you revelation knowledge, understanding, understanding how to apply the word to your life. All these things fall under. He is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. Draw near to God and he draws near to you. That's what this is all about. And so that's what I want to close with a prayer that this this last one is is, is a prayer is a is called a poetic prayer and this is just a prayer that the lord gave me for us to be committed and everything we just talked about in today's lesson to survive to survive in this world we must commit to do everything we can do within our power to hold on to god's hand to follow his word to feed our spirit starve our flesh feed our faith starve our doubt we have to we have to commit to do that every day the devil is trying 24 7 to pull us away from god to pull us back down to negativity he's working overtime especially on those of us who love the lord he doesn't care about those lost in the world because they're already going to hell he's focusing specifically on followers of christ because he wants to pull us down to the pit of hell with him and that's why we don't we know we don't let it go and let god we let we let go and let god take it to the highest and we never let go of his unchanging hand and this is a prayer open oh, the car like wait thank you lord and this is the prayer it's called it's called poetic power prayer poetic power prayer you can hear my background here oh lord i pray to you today for blessings in every way for i know when i speak in jesus name your touch you touch everything I say. In Jesus' name, I claim complete health. By your stripes, I am healed. And when I'm covered by the blood of Jesus, I know that fate is sealed. In Jesus' name, I claim deliverance from every stronghold inside me. For now, I've given all to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In the name of Jesus, addictions are gone that once ruled all my life not knowing the power i had within took me down and gave me nothing but strife in jesus name restore was mine that the devil just snatched away my peace my joy my health my wealth lord i take them all back today in the name of jesus i lift everything up that i may have forgotten to say for seek you first and your righteousness and you bless everything I say in the name of Jesus my main request is to help me remain strong to never take my mind off you so I'll never do anything wrong the power of prayer amen the poetic power of prayer and I'll put all these poems on the YouTube on our channel amen father God we thank you Lord we thank you Lord for another lesson today Lord we thank you Lord for the ability to come before you day Lord we thank you Lord for just being able to to be a, a part of this. I'll get that in a minute, uh, Lisa. I'll get that in just a minute. We thank you, Lord, for being able to just stand still and, and come into your knowledge of your, of your word, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for just being able to touch that person right now who's been with us this whole time, Lord. Someone's been watching the past two hours and all our, our praise and praying and talking to the Lord, and they don't understand. You're watching this whole program and don't understand why you're here. You've been crying the whole time. You've been not understanding and you feel like giving up on the world. If that's you right now who can hear my voice, say this prayer with me right now. Father God, forgive me. Forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. And I commit right now. I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without lifting up to you first. Creating me, O Lord, a clean heart and remove me, Lord, 
anything and everything that is not like you in Jesus name and if you said that prayer sincerely the Holy Spirit will come into your life and help you spring clean people things you're doing activities all the things you're doing in your life that is not like God amen amen so welcome for all the, those who just said that prayer with me for the first time and just keep feeding your spirit once you've said that prayer of salvation the key now is to continue feeding your spirit and starving the things in this world doubt fear anxiety all that's of the world the devil's trying to steal your joy keep feeding your spirit resist the devil and he will flee amen 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 right now father god right now i want to buy every spirit of retribution revenge retaliation from coming against any fellowship member because of your participation in this fellowship in the name of jesus i bind every spirit of retribution revenge retaliation and backlash in every other demonic spirit named or unnamed seen or unseen and cast all of you out of our presence out of our mind out of our home back to the pit of hell from whence they from whence they came in jesus name and father got loose right now lord loose into the fellowship unspeakable joy peace beyond understanding lord loose restoration lord restore restore all areas of our life lord and father got loose reconciliation continue to heal marriages that are falling apart right now bring them back together lord bring forgiveness love harmony health and well-being back to those marriages that are struggling to survive right now and bring healing to all family disputes in jesus name and continue to protect all families and marriages that are not falling apart but the devil is still attacking lord and father got loose supernatural healing by your stripes we are healed lord healed healed and we and we claim every day lord we speak healing every single day by your stripes we are healed and i believe i received my healing i believe i have received my healing in jesus name